Welcome to Ninja's Papers. Today we're going to showcase some crypt horrors. What's up, Miniatures Paintbrush Legion? It is Robert, your host, and I'm here to say thank you. Thank each and every one of you to come in and tuning in to this show. Let's get on with it. So I have a showcase here, and it is of these Crypt Horrors. And the Crypt Horrors is my first venture into a Flesh Eater Quartz army that I'm starting up. And this is a project, an endeavor that, well, I guess multiple different things fell into place in order for me to be able to do this. So uh, first off, uh, I was looking for a new project and I didn't know what to do. Second off, I already have these guys right here. All right, one I split a box with uh, and I had the Flesh Eater Course Park and this one I've had there for two years. I mean, it's about time I, I kind of stopped looking at that terror geist and saying, you know, it's terrifying me to build it. You know, I, I got to do something about that. So my first venture, I'm getting my toes in wet with Flesh Eater Quartz, is going to be the Crypt Horrors. And that's what I'm going to do a tutorial on. Actually, you can catch that next week, next week's show. Um, and another facet in which uh, got me into this, it was more of, well, it's October and you know what's coming around the corner, getting mid-month into the late month of October. We got some Halloween coming up and it kind of inspired me to actually, you know, do something creepy, right? So we're going to do something creepy right here by showcasing these crypt horrors and then next week we're going to do a tutorial on showing you exactly how what I did in order to paint it up and get the effect that I got for these guys. Now I'm going to do multiple projects on the Flesh Eater Quartz. This is not the first um, but you know maybe you can enjoy me in this adventure. Why don't you try to take up an army or something especially this guy for me two years right uh take up something that's in a box to see that feel you feel intimidated by and let's conquer that intimidation together that's right together right and i'll show you my progress through my videos and everything else uh you can show me your progress on facebook on the miniatures paintbrush legion so if you join the miniatures paintbrush legion on facebook you can show me your progress through your projects that you're doing because i'm really interested in what your guy the community is actually doing out there and i want to motivate as many people as possible that motivation in turn in turn motivates me to get better content on the channel so we're all helping each other out we are a community well enough enough of me blabbering here let's get on to the showcase Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so let's get into the painting process. Now the painting process is a little bit tricky for me. Um, when I tried to do the painting process on this one, um, I didn't know what I was going to go for. Like I really didn't think about it until I was actually there and painting things up. In other words, I just kind of had an idea that I wanted to have some type of paint on it, but I didn't know what direction to go with um so i was thinking about green paint and i had green steiner as primer and i knew that i wanted to try that out so i did and after i tried that out i really was very satisfied with it um i mixed that up with a little bit of bone white in order to get some of the highlights for it so um it really actually worked kind of well at first i thought it was a little bit pale but then I really fell in love with it. Like there was a couple of times there I was going to really change my direction when it came to the green that I put on there and try something completely different. And, you know, I'm glad I didn't do that. Also, you know, when I really did the sores and everything else, I was, you know, really practicing my feathering technique in order to get that done. Uh, feathering technique, for those that don't know, is that you apply paint with, uh, usually I do a two brush uh, technique when it comes with uh, feathering. So I'll apply one brush, uh, it'll apply paint, the other brush um, is just wet with saliva or water. And I kind of just like feather it out and get it weaker so this way it looks like a nice blending transition. And I did that for the sores um, on the body of these guys. And it was, it worked really, really well. I'm very, very satisfied with all that. Now, as far as the base is concerned, I was really going a lot of different directions with the base, trying out new things. Um, I settled out, 
I settled down first. I, I put some uh, rubble on there and I was doing this brown and I didn't like the brown. I thought it was overwhelming. And then I came up with the idea of um, making a combination base, one where I do a roll out uh, pins of flagstone bases, but I mix it in with like dirt of a graveyard. So it looks like they're coming out of the graveyard, but maybe onto a path or something. And that really struck home with me. And then I played around with paint a lot. You know, I was doing a lot of uh, primer, gray primer in order to do it. And then like a cold gray to bring up the, the highlights. But what I really settled in on is, you know, doing, use a, a heavy blue gray first. And, and then from the heavy blue gray, I was just bring it up with a cold gray. And that combination really worked well for the flagstones for me. Uh, it made the base a little bit lighter. I always felt that it was a little bit too dark for my taste. And, you know, I really settled in on a pattern in which I want to create my army in and a theme for it. So I'm really glad I got an opportunity to paint these guys up. And these guys were pretty simple to paint up. Uh, I will have a tutorial next week, so stay tuned for that. Um, and if you're catching this sometime in the future, it'll definitely be in a Flesh Eater Quartz um, set of videos in which you can see. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what these suckers can do on a table. All right, uh, when it comes to Flesh Eater Quartz, when it comes to these guys, Crypt Horrors in particular, um, you have the Chosen of the King ability where you can re-roll hits to, of attack made by uh, this unit while it's wholly within 18 inches of any friendly abhorrent. Uh, the Crypt Haunter, uh, the leader of this unit is the Crypt Haunter. Add one to the attack characteristic of a Crypt Haunter's club and septic talons. So that's always good. Uh, Noble Blood. If your if your hero phase, you can heal one wound allocated to this unit. So healing is definitely awesome. And if unmodified, uh, the warrior elite. If unmodified wound rolls of an attack is made with a club or septic talons is six, then the attack of the damage characteristic uh, of three instead of two. So it actually increases that. So the clubs and the septic talons are ranges of one attacks three to hit is plus four to wound is plus three and the damage is two. So this definitely uh, awesome. Uh, usually the crit powers itself, the movement is seven, the wounds are four, bravery is ten and the save is plus five. I love that. I love that. So there's options here um, for allegiance abilities as well. So you can always ally them into your uh, other army if you want. Uh, Legion of Negash is what I'm going to do uh, as well. So I think that's really, really awesome. And let's get into the lore now. I mean, I'm really, I'm really excited about using these guys on the table. I think for the next Nova Open, I'm going to take these uh, Flesh Eater Quartz there and play my first Age of Sigmar game there. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun to be able to do that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the lore here. Now, I actually got my information from uh, online sources. Um, and so I, I just read a couple of things and one really struck me and I would love to read it. Crypt horrors are a variation of the common ghoul who have consumed the blood of a vampire, giving the creature supernatural size and strength, and used by many undead factions as a form of heavy shock infantry. The malformed monstrosities known as the Crypt Horrors are thankfully a rare sight, spoken of in hushed whispers by the Night Watchmen, Old Priest of Moor, Gravekeepers, and other nocturnal citizens of the Empire. The few persistent reports of the looming moon-mad fiends are dismissed as ravings of superstitious fools. At best, they are thought to be exaggerated sightings of unnaturally large crypt ghouls. Unfortunately, for the lands of the old world, however, the story is often accurate, for the crypt cars are very much real. And in order to create a crypt horror, a vampire must open up his veins to a ghoul and allow it to gulp down its precious blood, which is essentially a pale um, kind of bastardization of uh, 
the blood kiss and an act that is reveal, revealed by those count themselves among the elite of the Sylvain society. As such, these acts are often perpetuated by the most desperate of vampires, most specifically the vampires of the Stragoi bloodline for the Stragoi uh, to allow a crypt ghoul's forted mouth to sink into its flesh as a sign that the vampire is truly desperate because I don't want that thing sucking my blood, that's for sure. Nonetheless, the ghoul kings encourage this strange abhorrent practice. Once the ghoul has drunk the blood of a vampire, its eyes turn red. I'm going to say yellow because that's what I paint mine. And goes into uh, some kind of killing frenzy. During this stage of its transformation, the crypt horrors would pull down the weaker members of its own pack, dragging it screeching prey into the open grave or the shattered tomb in order to consume its gruesome feast undisturbed. After finishing its cannibalism, the swollen gruel will crawl back to its awakening, awaiting master, hoping for another draught of his blood. This transformation continues until, by the coming of the next full moon, the crib horror will have grown several times its original size and ferocity, thanks to its unnatural blood of the vampire and its consumption of extraordinary amounts of flesh. Crypt horrors provide a tangible benefit for their strogoi masters. True undead can be warded away from the grave haunts by sacred sigils and priests of more. Typical crypt ghouls are too cowardly to mount a full-scale assault on such place. Hence, the Strogai ghoul kings will create crypt horrors whenever they need to smash through such formidable defenses. Crypt horrors are neither living nor truly dead, and as they called of the moral Moore's realm put them what remains of their soul, they vent their rage upon the crypt gardens of the god of death. Because of this, the human gravekeepers of sepulchres and mausoleum fear crypt ghouls above all other minions of the ghoul king. Once the magical wards guarding the cemeteries are destroyed by the rampaging of these foul beasts, their vampiric master is free to raid the corpse fields beyond. Though the lineage of the Strogois has been broken, every taboo of by creating them, they were able to gain power this way. Cryptars are typically towers over smaller ghoul brethren, and although it retains the characteristic swoop and looping gait of its former life, its sinews become hard as iron, bony growths, and protrusions push out from the creature's spine, and talons lengthen, form splayed, dexterous hands. The potent diet of tough ghoul flesh, washed down with vampiric blood, weeks change inside as well as out. It wrecks him. Though the crypt horror's freakish metabolism will tool will soon drive the creature to, to consume its own body. But in the meantime, the fiend's constitution is such that it can re-knit every, even the most horrific wounds, and every wound, with effort of will. And this main reason is why the most elite vampires clique, tolerable cliches, toler tolerate these foul monsters Dark magic and sustaining power of necromancy literally runs in a crypt ghoul's veins, and therefore the sheer violence it can unleash is just about limitless. So 
these crypt horrors are part vampire and part ghoul and that transformation has made him to the hideous presence in which you see them right now and these Stargoy vampires i guess from uh, warhammer fantasy uh, are the ones that actually that that clan is the ones that actually you know really encourage the practice uh and and their desperate natures they'll just try anything so imagine having like a zombie or, or a ghoul actually come up to you and saying you know please can i drink your blood and you're like oh sure yeah i'm gonna let you do that no problem you know, i can't believe that those vampires are that desperate that they're willing to do that well I had a blast painting these guys. These guys were really, really awesome. I hope you like the lore. Um, I hope you like the, the video, the showcase itself. And I'm going to show you how I got these results next week on a painting tutorial. And that means next week on a Thursday. And that is Halloween at 7 o'clock. Well, I hope to see you there. Well, there you have it, guys. It's all painted up and ready for that gaming table. Now, this is my first adventure, and I plan to continue to get better at this uh, and so I can improve throughout the army. So as I put out new content, I'm going to show you my improvements and my progress. You could do the same thing. You can go over to the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion over there on Facebook. You can join that and post pictures of your hobby progress for your project uh, of something that you're overcoming as well. So you help me and motivate me so I can get more content on the channel and try to motivate you in turn. You see, we're a community. Let's conquer this fear together. Well, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the